let's talk about the Big Bang Operator. And if you've never heard about this, then you're probably wondering what the heck is the Big Bang Operator. It is simply three colon operators put together to achieve one single thing. And this one single thing is really useful to help you assemble information at some point and then stick that into a function as arguments at a later point. This is a super convenient design pattern and in today's video I'll show you how that works. So let's dive in. All right, so in my R script, I have set up a simple example to demonstrate what the Big Bang operator can do for us. In this case, I've taken two data sets, namely the diamonds data set and our favorite penguins data set, and I've done the exact same operation on both of them. So what I've done is with the diamonds data set, I have selected two columns where I named them Y and X, and then I ran a linear model function on this to explain why, via the x variable and I've used the data that I've just created, so this data frame, to stick that into the lm function. And then nothing too fancy happens. I simply get a linear model using these coefficients here. And I did the exact same thing with the Palmer Penguins data set, but with two different columns. There I've said that our response variable is the body mass and the other variable is the flipper length. So with that, I get a different linear model to explain my relationship via these coefficients here. So this in itself isn't too fancy, it's just the same operation done on two separate data sets. But what is nice is that the function that we use to run the linear model is the exact same. We simply say that it's a linear model of y explained by x using a particular data set. And the reason why this works is because we have prepared our data like so. We have made sure that the color columns are called y and x. So really we have set up our data set for this particular LM call. But this means that the thing that we use inside of the select function needs to look different. It's always y is equal to and x is equal to and then followed by the two columns that we need to use for this particular data set. And this is where the big bang operator comes in. It allows you to assemble the columns that you need through a list. This means that you don't need to write the things into the select function itself, but instead can assemble this list of columns that you want to use at a previous step and then reuse it later on. Let me show you how that works. Let me take this part here and then let's wrap this into a list. This won't work because we cannot assemble a list like so, because this price and carrot, these variables are not available when used outside of the select context. R will try to first create the list and then jump into select. So what we need to do instead is to wrap these into quotation marks to make this into a name. So really what we have here now is a list simply saying that the Y column should correspond to the price column and the X column should correspond to carrot. And now if I try to execute this, we see that this doesn't work because select kind of expects something which is not a list. Even though we have assembled this quite nicely for us for later use, we cannot really use inside of select. And what we want to have now is to make it different, make it be usable. So even if we had this as a variable, we couldn't say, hey, use this. So even if we run this, we see that this doesn't work. And if we run all off, like the warning suggests, this is a deployer function, then we'd still see that it doesn't work. So this warning here is kind of a false flag. But what does work is the big bang operator. It will take the list like we've written here and put this into the select function as if we had written this stuff into the select function manually. And in case you're wondering, does select also work with these quotation marks? Then yeah, let's just throw this in here and check and it still returns the same thing. We look in here, still the same data. So it does work and the Big Bang operator, as I've said, is simply this tiny little thing of three colons stick together. And now hooray, it does work exactly like we want. And then of course we could chain this into our linear model like before and everything still works nicely. So how can this be useful? I'm sure you're wondering about that. Here it was a very trivial thing to do, but even though it is trivial, it allows us to separate two different operations and stick the things together later on. For example, this gives me the power to control the flow more. For example, if I have a variable that I call diamonds, then I could say, okay, if the data set is diamonds, then I could assemble the data set and the list of columns I need. And in the other case, 
I could then assemble the other data and the other list of columns I need. And once I have that, I can then take this data set and then throw this into the select function and then throw this into the linear model. So if I execute this now, we see that everything works. And if I put in penguins here, then I get a different linear model. So this allows me to separate out assembling the information that I need later on. You could imagine that there is some elaborate function involved to create this list, depending on a whole bunch of other things. And I could wrap this into a function and have this function return the list of things. So this is really where this becomes more useful. The reason why this works here is because if you look into the select function, this simply uses this dot 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 operator to select the columns that we want. And this operator is used in a whole bunch of settings. For example, it is often used in the Elmer package to do AI stuff. So let's apply our Big Bang operator there. And to do so, we can load the Elmer package and set up a chat with, say, Anthropic and set it up so that it knows, OK, it will get a PDF text and it will extract desired information from that. And of course, now we need a PDF to do so. And for that, I've brought an invoice template that I showed how to calculate in a different video if you're interested in figuring out how to generate such parameterized reports using types make sure to check out this video or that video i'm not sure in which corner it will appear but my point is there will be a video about how to create such pdf documents using r and types and i've simply used this here as an example to extract information from this pdf so this is our pdf so let's extract the text from this and here we simply say our PDF text will be extracted using the PDF text function from the PDF tools package. And we only have to stick in the path to this PDF. And now if we execute this stuff, we see that there's all the text from this PDF. And with this text, we can create a structured chat, which means that we call the chat structured function from the chat object. And in there, we simply stick in this text and say, OK, what is the type of object we need to extract from here? And this is where type object comes in. It's a function from the Elmer package. And inside of this function, you can specify things that you want to extract. Well, first you have to describe what's the point of this uh, object. This will tell the LLM what to do with it. Here we say it's extracted invoice information, but then you can extract all the properties you need. So here we want to get a recipient that will be a string, so a text, and it is described as the name of the invoice recipient. And then you want to get the total, which is a number, and it is described as the the invoice total. And now if you execute all of this, then you see that uh, Claude Sonnet 4 model is called and it will get this data from the invoice here. And because this invoice is so generic, it says here client name, the LLM also only returns client name. And for the total, we have this amount here. And this is also what we get here. So that's neat. That is what Elmer does. But my point here isn't really about Elmer here. If you want to learn more about how to do this structured data extraction, I do have a video about that as well. You can find the link either here or there. Again, I still don't know in which corner of the screen it will pop up. But either way, there is a video about that. My point here in this video is rather about how to use the Big Bang operator here. And if you look into the type object function, you see that type object uses this dot 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 operator as well. So this means this is a place where we can throw in a list of specifications. And if we put a Big Bang operator in front of that, then it will be just put in there as if we had described it or as if we had written it like manually in there. So let's try this. Let's take this stuff here and create a list of properties. So a list of properties, it should be a list of these things here. And the nice thing is that these type string and type numbers functions simply return objects that Elmer can work with. And then we can stick this in here and then throw in the Big Bang operator in here. And let's redo this. And you see that still everything runs and you get the exact results back. And now this gives you a whole bunch of flexibility to extract different information for different scenarios. For example, maybe you want to make this data extraction tool available to different parts of your company and 
one part of your company is really interested in recipient and total it doesn't need anything more so you simply create a list of these things for that department and for another department they want way more information like what are the invoice positions what's the tax amount and so on then you'll create a different list for that department and in your code all you have to do is to run this stuff here the code for the actual extraction will always look the same regardless for which department you use that but you just need to write code that assembles this list of things to extract and there you can use some logic to create different lists for different departments so again this is a really powerful pattern it allows you to keep the extraction logic really the same it's always the exact same thing but to move out a different part of the logic of what to extract into a different part of your code so here this can give you a whole bunch of structure for your project nice with that we've covered the big bang operator and what it can do for you let me know in the comments if i forgot something or if i went over something too quickly also feel free to let me know if you enjoyed this video always helps me to know what to do next and now with all of that said i say thank you for watching and i'll see you next time